The systematic onslaught against abortion isn't just about problematic individuals. It is about problematic systems. Hey friends, Abdul Al Sayed here. Before I keep going, make sure to like, subscribe, tell your friends. We're trying to talk about some important issues here and we need more of you. So I want you to take a look at this video from 2015. All right, this is state rep, Trisha Cotham. My first pregnancy ended in an induced physician assisted miscarriage while I served in this chamber. It's not the type of miscarriage that we often think of where you lose the baby completely and it's over. That's not what happened. My doctor told me that this pregnancy would likely not be viable and that if I did not take swift medical action, my life and any hope of future babies would be in severe danger. I trusted my doctor and her medical expertise. This decision was up to me, my husband, my doctor, and my God. It was not up to any of you in this chamber. In that video, Representative Cotham, she courageously tells her own abortion story, talks about how it was a decision between her, her husband, her doctor, and her God. That kind of courage, well, I wish she would have kept it because, well, just a couple weeks ago, she decided to jump ship. Why? All for a bit of power. She changed her party affiliation from Democrat to Republican, claiming that somehow the Democratic Party had too much control over her. But it just so happens that by becoming a Republican, she was able to cement a Republican supermajority in the state of North Carolina. She went in eight years from courageously telling her own abortion story to becoming the deciding vote on an abortion ban. You can't make this stuff up. It's so cynical. Is it really worth that much to have a little bit of power? Well, I guess in Representative Cotham's case, I guess it is. Sell out everyone in your state just so that you can be a part of a supermajority. It's sad, it's frustrating, it's hypocritical, and it is so cynical. And I think that's the story we're all focused on when it comes to the systematic dismantling of abortion rights. Individuals doing cynical things to rob their neighbors and their community members of basic rights. And don't get me wrong, there is a lot of that. But the story of abortion rights is a lot bigger than a couple of cynical, hypocritical individuals like Representative Cotham. Here, I'm gonna stop and read you a message from our sponsors, the Marguerite Casey Foundation. We're all painfully aware of the attacks against black studies happening across the country. In 2020, the 2021 school year alone, more than a third of elementary and high school students lived in a district that suffered a campaign to ban quote unquote critical race theory. These efforts happen because the people in power know that black studies fuels action that can shift the balance of power. And that's why our sponsor, Marguerite Casey Foundation, is excited to help get black studies into as many hands as possible. They're supporting Kaepernick Publishing and Haymarket Books in a joint effort that'll be released this month. Edited by Robin D.G. Kelly, Kianga Yamada-Taylor, and Colin Kaepernick, our history has always been contraband in defense of black studies. Their book will be available for download as a free ebook in late May. Learn more at caseygrants.org. See, the thing about it is that while North Carolina became the 24th state to ban abortion in its confines, we're missing the broader story here. Because the other thing that's been happening in North Carolina for a really long time has been a systematic onslaught against democracy through gerrymandering. Look, the basic principle of democracy is one person, one vote. And when you systematically create districts so that you are packing certain people together and cracking other people apart so that you dilute the value of a certain kind of vote, which in North Carolina has been Democrats, well, you're violating the basic principles of our democracy. And in North Carolina, they got no problem doing that because they have been packing and cracking Democratic voters for a very long time. Look, North Carolina is a classic purple state. In fact, they as a state elected a Democratic governor who, by the way, is going to veto this abortion ban. But this is where the supermajority comes in. When you gerrymander legislative districts enough, you can create power in a way that can override a veto. That's what a supermajority can do. And if they vote to override the veto, there is going to be an abortion ban in North Carolina. But that's not just about one cynical representative Cotham who shared her story about an abortion and then voted to ban abortions in the same exact legislature. It's also about whether or not the structure of that legislature actually represents the people.
And there's been another story humming along at baseline. The 2020 redistricting in North Carolina was so gerrymandered that the North Carolina Supreme Court, they voted to block it. But that's when the Supreme Court was mainly liberals. And after the 2022 election, when the court itself changed hands, yes, Supreme Court justices are elected in many states, they decided to rehear the case. And guess what they decided? Well, that the gerrymandering that creates a Republican supermajority in a state that just so happened to elect a Democrat was perfectly legal. You can't make this stuff up. And that's the thing about it, is that when we decide that a small group of voters has more power than other voters, they can ramrod unpopular legislation down folks' throats. What is an abortion ban? But unpopular legislation. Even Republicans think it's nuts. For a long time, Roe v. Wade guaranteed that abortion would be a right, no matter what your Republican candidate for office would say. So people who wanted to protect abortions, but kind of like the other things conservatives were saying, could have their cake and eat it too. Not anymore. Because the legislature does not reflect democratic opinion. Instead, it reflects the power of conservative policymakers to play games with our electorate to conserve their own power. So stepping back here, we can pay attention to Trisha Cotham and all the Trisha Cothams that exist out there in the world who cynically and hypocritically will do what it takes to keep and hold power. But we also have to pay attention to the humdrum nature of the stories that don't get our attention. And this is part of the problem with the way we do democracy in this country. So much of the way we're wired is about stories. We like to hear them and tell them. And in stories, you have a protagonist and an antagonist. One person doing good things, battling people doing bad things. And we hope that the good will outdo the evil. And that's all part of it. But what happens when evil becomes so bureaucratic that you stop paying attention? When it gets laundered through bureaucratic processes that we don't really want to pay attention to because they're kind of boring. That's where the real evil happens. That's where real power sits. And we've got to be a lot better about talking about those systems, about the ways that evil gets laundered through bureaucracy to create systems that promulgate that kind of evil. Because look, how many people are interested in a story about gerrymandering? Most people don't care about the math of legislative districts. It's boring as hell, happens every 10 years. And you know what? It's just not interesting. Your eyes glaze over. Instead, we're interested in talking about stories of individuals but we forget the way that the baseline has changed. So my call out here is really about political media. Look, talk about individuals all you want, but you got to start talking about systems. And it's not enough just to describe the system for people who already know what's going on. We have to be in the business of teaching about the ways that these things happen. So here's my effort. Every 10 years, the census data is used by the party in power to redraw legislative districts. And because of the nature of where Republicans live, they tend to live in more rural communities, they occupy more space because they're more sped up. So it's a lot easier, unfortunately, to gerrymander for Republican control than it is for Democratic control. And the conservative movement in this country has been ruthless about its attempt to control two critical institutions of government in this country, the courts and state legislatures. And they've done this to some great effect. In North Carolina, they put a lot more effort into winning back the North Carolina Supreme Court. That's the courts. And that court then reheard a case, which by the way is unprecedented, about the legislature. And guess what we have now? What we have is an abortion ban in a purple state. And that abortion ban looks like it's going to be immune to a Democratic governor's veto. So while you might have heard a lot about Trisha Cotham and her hypocrisy and cynicism, you also need to pay attention to Supreme Court races and state legislature gerrymandering because that's where the real power is. And all of us who talk about civics have got to do a better job of explaining how these systems work.